I believe the Holocaust is comprehensible. Indeed, we must comprehend it. We have no choice. The future of mankind depends upon it. On March 24, 2023, the Reagan Library opened our latest special exhibition, Auschwitz, Not Long Ago, Not Far Away, to a sold out crowd. Created by Spanish company Musealia alongside the Auschwitz Birkenau State Museum in Poland, the exhibit displays the most comprehensive and largest collection of artifacts linked to the history of this Nazi German concentration and extermination camp. The exhibit displays over 700 artifacts curated by a panel of experts. The artifacts come not just from Auschwitz-Birkenau, but from 20 other cultural museums and institutions from around the world, including Yad Vashem out of Israel and the United States Memorial Holocaust Museum out of Washington, D.C. Hundreds of personal items, such as suitcases, eyeglasses, and shoes, that belong to Auschwitz deportees are on display in this exhibit, which offers an audio tour in both English and Spanish. Other artifacts include three concrete posts that were part of the fence of the Auschwitz II Birkenau camp, fragments of an original prisoner's barrack from the Auschwitz III Monowitz camp, a desk and other possessions of the first and longest serving Auschwitz Commandant Rudolf Haas, a gas mask used by the SS, as well as a German-made World War II era Model 2 train car, the same model used to transport Jews to camps and ghettos. Let's now listen to the exhibition's creator, Luis Ferrero, share the inception story of this exhibit. I was given for my birthday in 2009 this book um, called Man in Search of Meaning by Viktor Frankl. I was completely caught into the way that he is narrating his experience in different camps and especially one of them being Auschwitz. So we wanted to then create an exhibition that could make accessible the complex story of, of Auschwitz through the authenticity of original artifacts. It was an amazing process of many, many years and at the same time painful, of course, because of why it came to life and of course because of the content itself but I have to say also in my case of a, a journey of gratitude to all the people, to all the institutions that helped us to create the exhibition. And why did the Auschwitz-Birkenau State Museum get involved? Let's listen to the chairman of the council of their foundation, Marek Zarzak. I knew and know many survivors, many former prisoners, and they very often say, you know, what would be worse than Auschwitz? Treblinka or Sobibor or Grossrosen? It would be to forget about Auschwitz. We're often asked, why is this exhibit at the Reagan Library? That's an easy one. Embracing the power and value of human freedom was the most fundamental element of Ronald Reagan's belief system. During World War II, Captain Ronald Reagan served in the first motion picture unit of the Army Air Corps. His team received a top-secret assignment 18 days after FDR's death in April 1945. Hitler had committed suicide as Allied troops closed in on Berlin. Victory in Europe was declared on May 8th. Shortly after, raw footage filmed by the 1st Motion Picture Unit secret combat camera crews at German concentration camps arrived at Fort Roach to be edited for viewing at the Pentagon. Ronald Reagan was among the handful of officers on the base to see the, as he called them, ghastly images and to discover the full truth about the horrors of Nazism. They also received additional secret Signal Corps films showing the liberation of other death camps. In his autobiography, he wrote how those engraved images on my mind will be there forever. He intentionally kept a print to show his children one day. As promised, the secret film was revealed to his daughter in 1961. Millions of people lost their lives there. And it's one of those things where it's hard to believe that mankind can be so cruel to mankind. It truly is. This exhibition also showcases Solomon Kreiser's talit, or prayer shawl, left behind when he was taken and killed at Auschwitz. 
a yellow Star of David that all Jews had to wear while out in public, a medical table and instruments the doctors at Auschwitz used for the torturous so-called medical research they used on prisoners, the election ballot for Adolf Hitler, and even an original Pablo Picasso that was used for the 10th anniversary of the liberation of the camps. While installing this exhibition, we had the chance to speak to some of the key people behind it. Let's go back now to the creator, Luis Ferrero. Hatred uh, does not happen overnight. It's just a very long process and it starts with very small things. Uh, there's a lot of people who write us and who ask us, what can we do? What can they do? You don't need to be somebody very important or have a very prominent social profile or you don't need to create exhibitions to actually do something. Everybody, every visitor can make small changes that actually make a difference. You have to, to be a little bit different at the end that you were at the beginning. That people will be able to, to think about their own moral responsibility in the today's world. And this simple moral anxiety about our own role, I think this is the core of what we call remembrance. You have to not only listen to the stories of the Holocaust survivors, but you have to internalize them. You have to actually be grateful for having the ability to listen to these testimonies. And you have to honor their presence by not denying what happened. 10 million young kids saw my tattoo. That says something. I'm the last generation of memory and I was wondering who's gonna remember us. All of you, because once I talk, I give you my story and now it's yours. She shares her story, so it becomes our story. I really think there's no better way to explain this exhibition than that. We encourage you to come up to the Reagan Library to see Auschwitz not long ago, not far away, to learn the stories of the survivors and the victims so that their stories can become your stories to share to your friends and family. Because this exhibition does sell out, we encourage you to purchase your tickets in advance by visiting reaganlibrary.com Auschwitz. Let's now go and listen to the co-creator and curator of the exhibition, Dr. Michael Berenbaum. What I hope the audience comes away with is the determination to contribute in whatever unique way they alone can contribute to making Auschwitz far away and long ago. One of my great teachers, a historian, spoke to the German uh, parliament to the Bundestag, and he thought he gave the three commandments that come out of the Holocaust. Thou shall not be a perpetrator, thou shall not be a victim, and above all, thou shall not be a bystander. To which I want to add, but you must be an upstander. This is a very, very complex narrative and a very complex topic. Every visitor that comes here, it's making a commitment to understand, to try to understand a, a narrative that is very traumatic, that speaks about ourselves and the borderless manifestation of our own inhumanity. And, and that is something that takes a lot of courage to, to do. We show 700 original artifacts, but we firmly believe that the most important thing of these artifacts is not what we see, but what we know of them. And for that, sometimes you just have to close your eyes to remember them and to, uh, to see the artifact and then to actually have a closer look with your heart is what I think will create the empathy with visitors and hopefully they will understand the human uh, aspect of this tragedy, which is in the end what really matters to us. It's a warning to see what can happen if you allow hatred destroying somebody else because of color, sexual orientation, religion, whatever we're different. Because basically, my opinion is we are more alike than we're different. Thank you for joining us today. We hope we inspired you to come on out to the Reagan Library to learn from these stories so these stories can become yours to share. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. The freedom we enjoy carries with it a tremendous responsibility. You, the survivors of the Holocaust, remind us of that. 
Good and decent people must not close their eyes to evil, must not ignore the suffering of the innocent. and must never remain silent and inactive in times of moral crisis.